Good day, good day. I'm Ashley Mingwasser, and this is Classroom Conversations, the platform for Georgia's teachers. Classroom Conversations is an award-winning podcast series for educators presented by the Georgia Department of Education and Georgia Public Broadcasting in partnership. If you're new to the show, I encourage you to go back and listen to earlier episodes for uplifting conversation and universal instructional strategies. Peer encouragement, that's our topic today. You know, one thing encouragement experts love about encouragement in the classroom It focuses on effort, not on achievement. No, that's what praise is for. Encouragement is process-oriented. It unlocks success, boosts motivation, and instills self-confidence. And moreover, encouragement is catching. It's one of my favorite words to utter, encourage, such a mellifluous grouping of syllables. On encouragement's etymology, if you're wondering, it comes from the 15th century Old French encourager, en meaning to put in, encourage meaning heart, to put in heart. Today's guest puts in heart, all right, her whole heart. Delise May taught elementary school for 10 years before moving on up to seventh grade math intervention the past two years at Sylvan Hills Middle School in Atlanta Public Schools. Delise modeled encouragement for middle schoolers, thereby empowering them to take the lead and encourage each other. Essentially a professional encourager for the classroom, Delise is moving on up again, having just been awarded this promotion, Instructional Coach for Mathematics. Now Delise is going to encourage teachers. Welcome, Delise. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Are you happy? Oh, my God. I can tell. I cannot contain You it. have such a positive spirit. You're <laughs> bursting at the seams. Have you ever done a podcast before? No. This is your first time? Absolutely. How would you rate the uh, environment thus far? I'm blown away. You are? What do you like? It's all the stuff. It's all the cameras <laughs> and the buttons and the lights and all the people that help this happen. Yes. There's a whole crew in there for you here today. All for me. Yeah. All for you. (laughs) Tell us the story of how you got here, not to the studio today. I'm sure you took the highways unless you have an airplane. (laughs) But how did you get into the profession of teaching? Oh, my God. Um, My grandmother taught in Atlanta public schools for like 31 years. Did she? Yes. And she's like my soulmate. Like she was. My grandma was my soulmate too. Yes. So I think her just being such a kind human And I wanted to be like her. And so I was like, I'll either be a teacher or a lawyer. And I knew in elementary school that I wanted to be a teacher or a lawyer. You knew that. I knew it. And so I was like, no, not going to be a lawyer. You have to be in school for like seven years, eight years. Yep. And then I went on to get an EDS. So so you were still in school for seven years. (laughs) That's really funny. (laughs) People often mistake me for an attorney, actually. You got Uh, that vibe. Thank you. I went to traffic court this week and the security guard was like, attorney, right? I was like, unfortunately, (laughs) sir, no. (laughs) I mean. I'm here with a citation, but don't worry. I was immediately dismissed and I got to ride off in the sunset uh, in my Acura. So, yeah, that was nice. (laughs) But I know what that feels like to be kind of torn between two professions. I knew at the age of five, actually, that I was going to go into hosting. I wanted to work in television, but I had a big pull towards psychology, actually. And I thought I was going to go into counseling as well. But, Mm -hmm. you know, the larger passion won, like for you, right? Yeah. Your larger passion won. Yeah. And you're really good with people. So I'm so glad you chose this route. Thank you. And so are you. I'm glad you chose your route. And we're about to hear just how good you are of an uh, encourager. Encourager? (laughs) I'll take it. Okay. What is the professional word for to be, to to encourage people It would be an encourager, right? It has to be encourager, right? An encourager, yeah, exactly. I was an English major. You think I'd have this all figured out. (laughs) Who is your encouragement idol? Like you've had a celebrity or dignitary that you look up to. I'm just going to have to go with Michelle Obama. (sighs) My oldest sister, she calls her Mish, like she knows her. She's never met her in her life, but we call her Mish in my family. That's an excellent choice. She's so kind and she leads by example. She does. And she does it with like poise, which I'm not great at yet. Still working on that. (laughs) But I love the, what she says about when they go low, you go high. Yes. And it's always like, just be kind anyway. That's what I take from it. Be kind anyway. And so you're going to inherently encourage others because you're you're just going to give them grace. That's right. And be kind anyway. Okay. I like that message. Was there a pivotal moment for you, Delise, when you saw positive results yourself from maybe an encouragement mentor in your life? I would have to say I'm probably the most encouraging person that I know. (laughs) Um, Sometimes it's annoying 
because like my siblings will be like, you know, this happened and this happened. I'm like, well, the bright side is oh. or the glass half full is. And they're like, not right now, Delise. I just want to vent. Um, I just want to vent. Please commiserate with me. Yes. So I think it's really me. Like I just I was born with this innate drive. I'm just determined. And so mm-hmm. I don't give up easily. And yes. so I encourage myself like you can do this. You've got this. Yeah. So you've just got an encouraging spirit. It's just who I am. Yeah, I love that. OK. And, uh, you know, you, you sound a lot like an athlete. I Maybe was. because you were one. <laughs> Tell us about your some of your hobbies and interests. Oh, my gosh. So um, my mom used to run a lot. And I was eight years old. And, like, we walked to the track in the neighborhood. And I just kept running laps and laps and laps. And I just kept going, like, miles. And a track uh, coach saw me. And really? he approached my mom. He's like, I want her. Recruiting. Recruited me. And so at eight, I learned, like, all the techniques about how to run. And I just... I kept going, and then it took me to college, and here I am. Here you are. You <laughs> ran your whole life. Yeah, and my you, whole life. You are admirably tall. You have just such a beautiful, tall physique. So were you tall for your age at that time, too? I, I was, but you I didn't feel like it because my sister, is who's younger than me, 18 months younger, she's six feet tall. Oh, wow. So she caught me when I was like 11. So I never felt tall. You, But you were. But I and was. And that recruit, recruiting coach probably, oh my God, he probably knew. felt the same way. And like they teach you to never give up. Like, I am guided by a coach. If I join Orange Theory, I'm like, whatever the coach says I'm going to do. Like, yeah. I have to. Yes, it's the encourager in you. And yeah. you say you spend a lot of time outdoors as well. You say, where where is your safe place? Where do you like to go? In the Piedmont city? Park. He'd find you there on any given afternoon. <sighs> Especially in the spring, like when it just becomes nice enough to be outside. I just love running and walking in the park and just watching people I just smile all the time. Piedmont Park in Atlanta. And it's green. I love the greenery. It is beautiful. It's my safe, happy place. And you like games. You said you're, oh my a, God. you're a big a game night person. So competitive. What kind of games? Any games that I can win. Okay. so Definitely we, an athlete. We love, I love like the games you play, like game night with your friends and oh, family. Yeah. Like that's the best thing for me. So like heads up or like taboo. Oh, taboo. That's my favorite board game. Wait, no, not the board game. Uh huh. The board game. Whoa. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's wonderful. Well, I, I put it in the board game family. Family, because yeah. yeah. it's not really one of the modern ones. It's one of the the classics, I would say. Yeah. I would and choose taboo any moment. I'm a words person, so. I was an actress in my former life, and so <laughs> it gives me life. In your former <laughs> life. Uh, there are two pressing cultural matters I'd like to discuss with you before we okay. dive into your approach to encouragement. The first is uh, your family is from Bermuda. You've said. Yes, my mom is from Bermuda. Tell me about that. Have you been? Oh, my. I just came back. So um, the family goes like usually once a year in the summer and they either go to a carnival or they go to, um, yeah, cup match. What's that? Cup match is like their Super Bowl, but it's cricket. (laughs) Okay, I wondered why I hadn't heard of the Super Bowl in Bermuda. Their, Their Bermudan cricket Super Bowl. Yeah, it's huge. It's like one half of the island against the other half, and my mom is crazy about it. Somerset. Um. So <laughs> yes, I still have aunts that live there. Um. I have some aunts that live here, and like uncles and stuff. Yeah. So you you go there. So I need to know where do you stand on the Bermuda Triangle? OMG. Or so, have you stood in the Bermuda Triangle? No one, no Bermudian even travels to that part. And they actually hate when people say, they ask them about the Bermuda Triangle. They're like, we're more than a triangle. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, they so, get mad at it. I was like, I'm an American in real life. Like, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what were you taught about it? Were you taught anything about it? Basically, it's just really, they describe it as just really rough waters. Okay. And like, it's just not safe to be out there. And so they just don't go near it. Okay. That's a simple explanation for something way fishier going on right. out there. I think I'm going to get to the first, we'll get to the bottom of it. And, uh, you know, over the summer, you witnessed a cultural icon, Usher. From right oh here in Georgia. You went and saw Usher where? Did in, you Vegas, in Vegas last weekend. He has a residency. Yes, he does. Okay. Now, did you know Usher is actually a graduate of Atlanta's own North Springs High School? No, I didn't. So he himself got an education in, here in Atlanta. Wow. And uh, what was your favorite part of his performance? The roller Vegas? skating. He roller skated? He roller skated with the dancers while singing simultaneously. Oh, man. It was amazing. 
For sure. Never seen anything like that. That's really impressive. I'm yeah. surprised you have any heart left for your students if, <laughs> and you didn't leave it all out on the floor for Usher that night. I love your your encouraging, positive personality. Uh, thanks for sharing it with us, Delise. But let's look, let's look firsthand at your classroom encouragement practices, okay. shall we? Yes. What is your philosophy of teaching students? I know encouragement is a big part of that, but let's start there. I really believe that you have to first empower students. I think empower people in general, because it's not just with students that I do this, but if you empower students, then they have that sense of agency and then they believe in themselves. And once a student believes in herself, she's unstoppable. Yes. And so some ways I do that is just like kind of model like what that looks like. Um, for example, one of the things I say at the beginning of the year is you have to make mistakes in order to grow and to learn. And so that's a part of the philosophy, like you have to make mistakes. I bring up Einstein. I bring up LeBron. I bring up Michael Jordan. All these people that I think that they might idolize to show them that they've actually said making mistakes is the only way to get better. And so I'll say, guys, if I came in and I taught you two times two and you already know how to do two times two, you're just smart, right? But if I teach you a challenging thing that you've never done before, you're going to be smart er. Uh. And so I put the emphasis on the er and they're like, whoa. (laughs) <laughs> and so that kind of thinking over and over and over throughout the year, it kind of lets them know that, like, in this class, like, we're going to get smarter. And I was like, guys, so if you come to my class and you don't get smarter, I'm not doing my job. And so I've got to fix that. Mm-hmm. And so I put it on me, too. It's not just about them. It's about me, you know. Right. Helping them to see how smart they really are. Yes. I'll even tell them because some students, especially in math, are so discouraged. You know, they feel like I can't do this or their parents are like, I wasn't good at math. So she's not good at math either. And I'm like, I've never taught a student who was dumb. Yeah. Ever in my life. Never. And I'm like, never. I was like, there's some students who need multiple opportunities, but you're still going to get it. Yeah. Like that's OK. And some kids get it fast and that's also OK. But I've got to challenge you all at your proper level so that you grow. And so they kind of like take on that vibe. It's a different mindset. Yeah, it, it's a, it's an arena of growth in your classroom. So encouragement is part of that practice. Oh, my God. It sounds like yeah. how does peer encouragement foster confidence in them in terms of their academic achievement? They're challenged. Yeah. Like you said, you're forcing them to kind of grow beyond and reach What does it do for their confidence and their achievement? Okay, I'll give you this um, example. So I love math and I love seeing them grow and I like to show them that they grow. And so they took this mm, this sort of test that tracks your fall, winter and spring. Right. And so the kids were so tired at the end of milestones testing. It was just testing season. They're over it. Map testing, milestones testing. And so I said, hey, guys. I really want to see how you've grown, but you do not have to take this final one for me for this intervention growth test. And only like a handful of kids out of the entire seventh grade opted out. They really wanted wanted to to see. I had some students um, who actually asked to take it twice because they their their growth goal was at least one year's growth. Most of them grew two, three years, but just one. And so that really goes to show you when you build a classroom full of encouragement and like students who encourage each other. Like they're like, no, 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 you should, you should. Like they do it on their own. It becomes innate for them. They're encouraging each other. Yeah. What about what about when a student is struggling? Oh. Is there a is there a peer intervention piece of this? Do they get involved in lifting each other up? Yes, but I will say you first have to model it. This this is not something that they're just come to class with, right? And so Um, every year I've always got students who don't believe in themselves and who feel like they can't. And so I'll say, okay, well, um, you got to try first before I give you any help. And so if, you know, they're still persistent with that negativity, I can't do this. This is too hard. I say, well, you mean you can't do it yet? So you mean to tell me like this new idea that I'm teaching you, you don't get it on the first day that I'm teaching it? Well, isn't that normal? Did you know how to ride a bike flawlessly the very first time or did you fall off maybe? I fell off a whole hill and scraped my body head to toe and didn't get on a bike for a few weeks. So, yeah, it can come down hard. So when I use that kind of example, they're like, wait a minute, she's kind of right. And so I'll say, why don't you try a different approach? Why don't you try to model the problem with a picture? And just try to make sense of that. And then I'll come back around and either maybe myself or another peer can help you. But you will not receive help until you help yourself. You've tried first. You have to try. And so your students actually, of their own accord, will see another student struggling and 
Let yes. them try and then step in. and Yes, and they'll also do the opposite. So if a student hasn't tried and the teacher helper comes around to like assist, they're like, wait a minute. You didn't even try it. You need to try first. And they'll go back to their seat and wait. <laughs> That's some pure accountability right yeah. there. I want to hear about other cool strategies you have in your class uh, or used to have in your class now that you've got this promotion, Miss May. Yeah. Uh, but where you're you're getting your students to encourage each other. More on what we're talking about here. Uh, let's start first. I know about your shout out. Tell me about your classroom shout out. Oh, my God. I love shout outs. So the very first week of school, I'll model shout outs. It may be the class was a little rocky the first day they saw me that week. And then the next class I say, you know what? I'd like to give the class a shout out. I noticed that everybody was engaged today. And even, you know, I'll call a student's name. You know, last time you gave up and you just persisted today. You did not give up. And the class like claps. And on the first week of school, though, they're like, I'll say, does anybody else have a shout out? They're like, this crazy lady, what does she want? <laughs> she wants us to say nice things about each other. But by the end, by like, after a few weeks, few months in, they are raising their hands because they want to shout each other out. And some will even shout out themselves for really? the growth that they've made that day. Miss mm-hmm. May, I was talking and I wasn't doing math talk only. and I know we're supposed to, but I got back on track and I was focused the rest of the time. And kids will clap. Oh, in seventh grade. How supportive. <laughs> yeah. What about you're using student leaders in the classroom and you're using iPads and you have these accountability practices. Where's the what's the accountability piece with peers? I tell them I am not the only teacher in the room. Oh. <laughs> I'm the teacher who facilitates <laughs> everything. Mind blown right now. Yeah. I'm like, I cannot do this without you. Oh. So because I'm one, if you got it, you are now a teacher leader. And so when I'm doing a small group or I'm like doing a one on one, a student can simply say, I need some help. And a teacher leader who I've identified because they're proficient that day will go and assist. So you name the teacher leader. Yes. So yes. everybody knows. So before I go to small group, the expectations are set. I have my open and closed sign on the back of the room by the small group area. And once it's closed, they know you may talk to the teacher of the period, who's the one with the iPad, or you can ask for support with actual math help from a teacher leader. Yeah. That's incredible. How and, do they respond to that? Well, at first, it's like, who is this teacher? Teachers normally make us sit down in our seats. We're not able to talk to each other. They want like a super focused and quiet room. And I'm like, if it's quiet, it makes me uncomfortable. Like, I, you have to collaborate. Yeah. You want to hear the den of conversation. And it has to be math talk only. Oh, I math be, talk only. I want to be serious MTO, about that. math talk only. <laughs> I should call you it should, that. You should. Yes. And so... <laughs> While I'm doing this small group or helping a student one on one, the teacher of the of the period or of the day, if you're in elementary school, is walking around doing laps about every seven minutes or so. They just check the timer on the board and they walk around to see if students are engaged in talking about math only. And they either give or take points, depending oh, on. Oh, there's a point system. Oh, yeah. I um I choose to use a platform called Class Dojo, but there are several platforms you can use. Um, and But they know you must give a warning before you take points. You can always give, but you can't just take. You have to give a warning first. And so that makes the students feel like it's fair. Mm. And they usually it usually runs itself. And so they only call me if they disagree. Okay. Yeah. So you settle the differences. Like I a referee, settle differences to only, use the athletic but metaphor. I stay out of it as much as possible. Oh, no, you guys need to handle that. Or oh, wow. it's super democratic. Some other kids might jump in and say, well, actually, that wasn't fair. Or that was you really were off task and they handle it. Look at that. Yeah. That takes a little pressure off you as well. Oh, my God. It allows me to do good teaching. Yes. I don't know how other teachers do good teaching without using the students yes. to be teachers. Yeah. What surprising effects? I'm amazed by all this. <laughs> but what surprising effects do you think peer encouragement achieve? achieves in your classroom? I think the best thing is like providing them the opportunity to have that agency. Yeah. Um, Some students, like they may be the oldest at home and they're like really in charge. And then you're trying to tell them, hey, sit down here. And this is when you go to the bathroom. And this is, no, I, you, you let them be because they can handle it if you mm-hmm. just set the boundaries. And so what happens is administrators who come in, they're like, may they don't even need you. Like, they don't even need you. I, they, I've i had my uh, assistant principal come in and sub for me for like 15 minutes or something because I had a parent meeting. He's like, I didn't do anything. They knew what to do. They knew how to do dojo. They knew how to move to the next task. They knew how to wrap up the class. It really shows you how smart and how 
efficient kids can be yes. if you just let them. Yeah. Teach the them and let go. The ship kind of runs itself yeah. with your practices in place. Do you think the results will be similar with teacher peers as you're moving on to a math instructional coach? Oh, yeah. You do? Because I'm an empath. And so I think if you come in trying to understand understand a person first, then they respect you more and they feel like you're actually for them. Like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm the boss. I'm the big bad. No. Like, what are your goals as a teacher? So you tell me what yours are and I'll observe and I'll tell you what mine are for you. And let's talk about that. And I think that's how you get better buy in. You don't just go around waving your magic wand like, I'm good at this. I'm the best. No. You let the magic happen. You, you let, let them, it occur. Yes. Yeah. You help them bring it out of them because it's there. Yeah. Yeah. So you probably have the same success with your with your teacher group that you're moving on to. Do you have a story in your mind that exemplifies the beauty of peer encouragement for your students? Oh, my God. So my first year teaching seventh grade math, first of all, if you know anything about middle school, first of all, I love it. But um, <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> everyone thinks middle school is worse. It's actually not. I love it. However, seventh grade is the <laughs> is the most <laughs> difficult grade to teach within middle school. And then that was my first experience in middle school. And so there's this kid and I'll call him Kenny. And in sixth grade, it was like right after it was right after the COVID year. So like not everybody came to school, but this kid did. And you go, Kenny. He made a name for himself. A uh, kid who skips and is disrespectful oh. and defiant and also the most popular student. Is and that so, right? Yes. So I get this kid, seventh grade, first week of school. I'm being kind, giving grace. And when you teach in inner city, um, they're used to a different approach. And so they're looking at me like, who is this Miss Frizzle? And this is like, who is this Miss Frizzle? We don't get her. And why is she nice? But she's also firm. But she's also fun. But she's also fair. This was so new for him. He said to me, um, because he was being disrespectful and I had given him uh, chances. And then eventually he earned attention because he was super disrespectful. And so he's like, I've never met a teacher like you. And I said, well, I'm glad. And I, I take that as a compliment. And I was like, I love you. And I know that you don't like me right now. And that's OK. But we are going to do this. And so I went to the principal to explain to her why he had detention. And she goes, Miss May, no one does detention here. And I talked to his mom and I said, hey, mom, I I really want to build a good relationship with this student. And I feel like if we just got to know each other better, if we got to talk, I think it would really help. And so, of course, she says yes. Right. And so she lets him stay. And so he and I have this great conversation. And I was like, who do you want to be? And da, 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 and all these things. I was like, I see you being like a star like Kevin Hart. You have the energy. You are a natural leader. And he started to look at me like this is detention. Right. <laughs> so we have that moment. Fast forward weeks later, actually a couple months later, I was like, you know what, Kenny, the kids really listen to you. I want you to be the facilitator of the math warm up today. Look at that. I want you to do it. So I stood back, you know, and he tried to mimic me. It was so cute. <laughs> um, he was doing great. Like he's an excellent leader. Right. But he was a little rough around the edges. So he's like, shut up. Somebody. She's over there talking. I was like, Kenny, remember, we <laughs> yeah. don't say shut up. We say be quiet or tell them what you want them to do. He's like, oh, my bad, me, me, my bad, my bad. Okay. <laughs> so he fixes it or whatever. And I go to tell the other teachers, they're like, that's not him. He would never do that. I'm like, no, no, no. But in my class, he's, he he's a really good leader. So I tell the other students, of course, he's the most popular kid. They're like, Miss May, he doesn't even go to class. I was like, no, but he doesn't skip my class. He, he comes really, to my class. <laughs> I was like, he's the best teacher leader I've ever had wow. in my entire career. And so... At the end of the year, I met with him and my principal, and he was part of my evidence for I was trying to get a level four, which is like above and beyond for a classroom um, positivity. Oh. That's one of the things we're rated on. And he spoke about how he changed in front of the principal of a as a result. Classroom climate. Yeah, Look it was that. amazing. I love that kid. So would your other students consider Kenny to be an encourager then? And you you created that um, within I'll be honest and be within my classroom setting. Absolutely. I can't That's all you can control. That's all you can control. What tips do you have for other teachers, Delise, if they want to set up a classroom where students are encouraged and then thereby encourage each other? Are there resources? Are there practices you haven't shared that you want to share as a kit and caboodle to get teachers started? You have to be the model. 
you can't do that. What my dad used to say, do as I say and not as I do. No, you have to be the model and of the expectations that you want to see. So if you want the kids to treat each other fairly, you must be a fair teacher. Mm. If you catch two kids off task and you just get the one who you saw last, you didn't even dive in to see what happened. And so that's not really fair. I would pull them aside or go talk to them to find out what actually happened. They start to see my teacher's fair. Well, dang, that's how we're supposed to behave in here. Um, You've got to be consistent. You can't be that teacher who's like, well, I'm going to call your mom. And then you don't. Or you're going to get silent lunch and then you don't do it. You've got to follow through and not just on negative consequences. You've got to follow through. I do fun Fridays because I just love celebrating. So like what's fun Friday? Fun Friday. Okay, the kids use their dojo points as money. And so I have this closet and I call myself like the gas station lady. I don't know. (laughs) So I have a closet full of snacks and treats. Right. And so with their money, they can buy a positive phone call. They can buy 10 points grade boost. They can buy chips and drinks with their money. Yeah. And so if I say I'm going to have fun Friday every Friday or however many Fridays I want, I have to do it. You celebrate them. You are consistent. Whatever you say, you have to do and do it with grace. You got to have grace, too. They're not going to be perfect. Just like I'm not going to be perfect. Right. So I have to give grace. You have to forgive them every day. Oh, you have to forgive them every day because there are teachers who are unable to let go. And the kid knows there are students. I'm not going to lie that I haven't liked, but they won't know it. They'll Uh, never know it because I love them and I tell them that I love them. I don't have to like you every day, but I love you every day. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to give you that grace when you need it. And I ask them to give me grace. So it's being vulnerable. Like they need to know that I'm a human. If I have a really bad headache, I'll say, guys, I'm going to need some grace today because I'm just not feeling myself. So I'm not going to be as energetic as I normally am. But I am here and I'm going to do my best. And they're like, Miss May, it's okay. We got you. Oh, yeah. So in your encouraging classroom, they give you grace. Oh, my God. Because you have prioritized the humanity and yeah. them and you and you connect in that. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. And, you know, you mentioned the was it class classroom dojo. Uh-huh. You use that platform. Are there any others you use for your peer encouragement practices? Actually, no. Um, it's my favorite right now. Um, and it even where I didn't think it was going to work in middle school. I thought, I thought they were going to think, oh, Miss May is so lame. We're not babies anymore. But because I used it basically as money, they don't mind. And they like seeing like when they earn like positivity points. They're like, oh, yeah, I got five. And I do star student. I, I didn't mention that. I got to mention star student. Please do. So one of the ways um, I let the teacher of the period or the teacher of the day be the teacher is they get to select their favorite star student of the day. Oh, wonderful. And so that student can't have made any, um, ha- couldn't have gotten any deductions. But if they did, they can still get a shout out, right? But they can't be star, star student. student of the class. And so I hate selecting because I love all of them and it's really hard to pick one. So I'm like, guys, I hate doing it. You do it. Star student, who is it? And you'd be surprised. They provide evidence like, well, Jamie was really... She was really struggling, but she didn't give up. And she could have because in other classes she does. But Miss May, she really kept going. And she even asked for help. And the class claps. And so, I don't know. I'm getting all gooey right now just thinking about it. I've had a smile on my face this whole time. Oh, my God. That's wonderful. (laughs) Thank you so much, Delise. You are a true natural-born encourager. Thank you. Thank you. And you you show up like this in your own life, it sounds like, with your family. Yes. Everywhere we go. I can't help it. It's who I am. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for being who you are. And I know you're going to go on to great success with your your teacher audience uh, during the school year. So best of luck to you. Thanks for being here. And that is our episode. Now off we go to make an encouraging everyday gift to our students of our time, our presence, as we encourage our peers and uh, our loved ones in our lives. We leave you with Delisa's mantra to be a nice human show grace. You're already a great teacher. I'm Ashley, returning soon with another Good For Your Ears episode. Goodbye for now. Funding for Classroom Conversations is made possible through the School Climate Transformation Grant. 